on here okay back with another live stream and I'm gonna switch gears a little bit I uh, need to do something here uh, let me check my sound make sure everything's working on my stream um, let me get on the desktop okay I haven't done uh, done anything with this in a, in a month or more my eight terabyte uh, backup drive that I bought for Chris for myself for Christmas uh, I got it uh, formatted to ext4 and uh, I set up a lucky backup profile and uh, eventually I'm gonna be using it as my well I haven't figured the whole thing out what I'm gonna do but the the problem is is that the one that just says Seagate expansion drive that's a five terabyte and since I didn't reformat or anything it has this default name and uh, <clears throat> it's in TFS. It is very prone. I've had the file system break three, at least three times, and I had to repair it with a uh, fixed disk or what, uh, whichever one it is for check check disk, fixed disk. Oh, I forget all which ones which for Linux and Windows nowadays. <coughs> but uh, um, really scary. I thought I'd lost. You might have lost all my backups. You know, and some of these, like my videos, especially a bunch of my uh, uh, live video backups. Uh, and well, a bunch of, I don't know what all, but a lot of things only have one copy on that drive. I'm not saving it on this drive because, well, I couldn't before because I didn't have space. Uh, since I got that uh, drive, I reformatted this system with, uh, I got rid of the Windows 7. It was divided in half with Windows 7 and Fedora 23. I got rid of all that, reformatted to Fedora 28, and so now I have more space, but... Uh, like here's a here's how I got 107 gigabyte right now, but see that's with me deleting videos as I go. So uh, just a few weeks ago I had like I remember I had 116, then 109, now 107, and of course there's well there's not much, you know things just tend to grow as you uh, work and uh, so anyway uh, that's why I just always delete these videos once they get backed up to that uh, that. Uh, five terabyte drive it uh, actually only uh, the system sees how much space is available on it and it's only four and a half terabyte is that's uh, what it sees it as that's how much you get when you buy a five terabyte drive and oddly enough the the uh, well, I guess it's not much it's actually even worse yeah the bigger it gets the worse the loss gets because the uh, um, Eight terabyte drive is seven point three terabytes, so you know that's not even, that's more than a half of a terabyte loss. So it's just ridiculous. It's not. I mean, how I don't know how to say it exactly other than it's not a loss. It's just that they just flat lie about what size they are. They they uh, I've read the explanation of how they figure it out, what they get, how they say it, but you know you doesn't matter. I mean, uh, you can't stretch or shrink. A measure a system of measurement it's either what it is or it's not what what you, what what it, it's either what it is it's what it is and it's either what you say it is or it's not what you say it is you know um so anyway <clears throat> it and besides it being a, a ripoff you know it's also very confusing to figure out what you really have to use and it's the bigger our drives get uh the worse the problem gets so anyway um what I've, I've done, let's see, let's go ahead and get off. I've got it plugged in, turned on, and um, and so it's mounted up. And uh, this, uh, well, this Seagate, the 5 terabyte, is getting worse and worse about, uh, oh, my stream seems to have went offline completely. Well, that's why I make a backup. Yeah, see now it's telling me disconnected, reconnecting. Oh, now it's back. Well, maybe I didn't lose anything. It does that automatically. Uh, and now it's got a green line on the stream like it's good. Oh, it did it again. Well, I've got, that's why I make a backup. Uh, that's why I make a backup uh, video while I'm uh, streaming. So, um, don't know what's going on there. I know what I can do to try and help it. I'm going to restart my modem. That won't hurt any. I, did, I usually a lot of times when I like, like I've been you know online all day watching videos and stuff and I rebooted everything this morning 
but that I was saying that in another video if I don't re um, if I don't reboot my modem at least once a day really I think I'm doing it twice a day uh, things will get uh, my, my connection will get uh, you, you know I don't notice like right now because I'm doing a stream I'm uploading and I'm actually not really downloading anything right now so because I'm not what you know surfing the internet or watching video or anything like that but um, um, well, what I'm trying to say is, is when I am watching videos and they start not, you know, caching and not coming in good, uh, then I know, well, I've got, you know, if I reboot that modem, it'll, it'll be all right. Um, just as soon as it gets done, <clears throat> and uh, if I, uh, and um, and I've got. It's supposed to be plenty ca over capable of what I've got, but my my uh, internet connection is 200 megabits down and 10 megabits up now. And I, this is a new modem that Charter Spectrum has given out. <coughs> um, one before uh, I had to get, I had to get another one because the one before wouldn't uh, wouldn't make it that high. It was close. It would do like up to like 194 or 195 or something, but it wouldn't make it. 200 maybe it was less than that but anyway they they sent out letters saying we're up in the speed and you, you we think you need a new modem and you know so I was like, all right uh, and i'm glad i got it because now i get 200 to 210 down and 10 up most of the time um <clears throat> but uh and my stream shows to be good but there's no preview oh i guess that i need to reload the preview now um I'm afraid it's going to be all broke up. My my talking will be broken up. I think it got stopped so many times. I'll probably end up having to upload the backup. But uh, yeah, stream's okay now. We'll see if that fixed it. I'm not streaming. Well, I am streaming the one camera over the Wi-Fi, but it's probably going to be all right with just one. And uh, so I won't uh, reboot the mo router. That would break my camera stream and everything. I'm not using it right now. But then I sometimes I have to close. OBS. I'm trying to check my audio over there while I'm talking, but I can't do it. I get confused. I get confused. I forgot that when I reload the page, I have to unmute the uh, audio on the player. I'm used to. I, I I just on the laptop there. I, there's a mute button on the front, and I can and volume, but I can mute and unmute it that way. But then, so that's all that's in my mind, you know. So anyway, glad I'm making a backup video. Um, so I think I'll, well, I'm going to leave that open so that I can check in on it. And, uh, so, uh, the importance of backups, there's always important, uh, whatever you're doing digitally, you need to always try to back it up if you can. I learned that the hard way. So anyway, the, uh, <clears throat> five terabyte drive, what I was trying to get to is that, it's gotten to where I swear three out of five times this last two weeks it does not mount when I boot up the machine and uh, sometimes I don't even notice it until later so about 10 minutes after I boot up the uh, I have a lucky backup set to a Chrome job set to make lucky backup run and do my backups well sometimes uh, anyway that, that's how come I, I always pay attention to it because uh, well, because I'm always waiting for it to be done. You can see, it's nothing there. When I go to the system monitor and type "lucky," if it had, well, if it was running in the background, and uh, if the script was running in the background, and but not, uh, but the uh, lucky backup wasn't running, it would just say S "sh" right in the window there. Uh, but it's already ran hours ago, several hours ago. And uh, <clears throat> and while it's running, though, you can see "lucky backup" and. Uh, rsync and all, all rsync is what lucky backups a, a, a graphic user interface for rsync is what it is rsync is what really does the backup it's command line tool and um, so um, anyway i generally do that and watch and because say like i can't really if i start a stream uh, or any other uh, thing really all i can really do see, and get away and eat without having some sort of slowdown and problem is to just like run one application. Usually, I choose to use Firefox and just you know surf or watch videos or something until after it's run, and then I can go on and do my own thing. Because see, like OBS is using 
22% uh, of the four quad core CPU all by itself. I was looking to make sure I was on the, <coughs> the uh, <laughs> desktop. Sometimes I'm not. So, um, so this morning I went uh, earlier after this afternoon sometime I plugged in the eight terabyte and I got opened up Lovegee backup and I thought okay now what is it I need to do because what happened let me go ahead and get uh, Lucky backup up and running this is the uh, app finder so uh, there's two versions of Lucky Lucky backup uh, on uh, in, when you install it in Fedora the regular user version and the super user version. Now, if you want your auto backups to work, you need to set your, your profile up in the super user. Version in the super user version because um, it won't have privileges to do all of your backups. Well, it won't have privileges to run automatically. That's the number one thing. It won't have privileges to run automatically, and so um, you can set it up and everything. And it'll. I did. I forgot that when I was built after I built this system, I forgot. Set it up in the regular user, and it wasn't running. Finally, I remembered. Oh yeah, and so I didn't want to do all this work again, so I imported that profile into here, and it won't let you overwrite the default one. You can't like rename it or, or save this one, the one I imported as default. So. When I would get in here, then I have to switch to that profile. It's not a big deal. It doesn't hurt anything about it running automatically. The Chrome job still runs my, you know, the, I, I set it, I guess I set it as the default profile. Let's see. No. Anyway, it runs it. Uh, and, but see, here's what I have set up. And I, a month or more ago, I set up a another job there. The ones that are checked are the ones that run, <clears throat> uh, you know, automatically every day and uh and that's why i have it set every day <clears throat> and uh i made one to, to just back up the entire five terabyte drive to the eight terabyte drive and i ran it one i knew it was going to have to run overnight maybe a couple of night all day and all night or something once you got it started that's the thing it, it works the machine too hard i forgot about the reason i don't guess i said the reason i, oh, I did say that it works the machine too hard I can't do much so what my plan is this evening it's seven almost eight o'clock and i've been up since this morning i'm getting tired so uh so i'll be going to bed for too long so I, i'm gonna let this thing run all night backing up i'll reboot and just let it do it automatically or i could just turn it on manually well it needs gonna need rebooting the machine is so that it won't be worn out you know the, so the cache and everything won't be full and the uh the, it, the video memory is the problem with this machine. It's a quad core with a uh, four gig of RAM. This is enough to do what I want to do. I'd love, you know, it's not as much as I'd like to have of a machine, but it's enough. But it's only got 256 megabyte of onboard memory, uh, video memory, video, right? and uh, it's uh, that's so I'm I'm having to reboot it. Uh, every, you know, well, depending on what I'm doing, but I usually lately. The things that I do, watching videos or making videos, I generally have to reboot it three, you know, two, three, four times a day. I used to never do that. Over the years, I had, I mean, all I ever had, the biggest video card I ever had was a 512 megabyte. But in my machines, but um, that was plenty. I could boot it up in the morning, run all day, 10, 12, 16 hours, and then shut it down when I was done. And also, I would run... Every program I wanted open all day, I'd have Thunderbird, Firefox, Crusader, System Monitor, and then here and there I'd open and close other apps, you know, and I'd let it run them all day long. Now, on this machine, and it's all because of that video memory, because this is a quad core. The previous machine is a dual core, 1.8 gigahertz, but I had a real video card in it. And also, the other thing is I was running Fedora 14 on it, and it was a heck of a lot less, you know, resource hungry than Fedora 23 and 28 and all that. Although, uh, I think the last couple of versions, I think 28 actually, may be less resource hungry than uh, with, and it may be the changes in Mate Desktop. Some They've done some changes somewhere because it's actually, um, well, 28, I've got 29 on my, on my NetPro Max server. It's uh, a single core, 2.8 gigahertz, but it's only a single core. 
and I've got well, I got XFCE, and then I ended up installing Mate Desktop too, and it turns and Mate Desktop's running okay on it. I mean, I didn't try to use it like a regular machine and open a whole bunch of stuff, but used to I on the one it had Fedora 23 server on it. Uh, oh, that was the IBM. This one may do better because it has oh yeah the same thing. This one has 128 megabyte real video card. I, 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 I an actual graphics card, I don't care if it doesn't have a lot of memory, it can do a lot better than an onboard memory chip. Uh, well, now they say these new ones may be better, but I don't have anything any newer than what I'm running on right here, so I can't say about those. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> anyway, I ran this profile. Uh, all night, all you know, like I, all after, I think I forget one. I guess I started it, went to bed, and let it run all night, and then I checked on it. And uh, I'll we'll look through it here. I ran it, and it, uh, it didn't get through. It wasn't through, but I started looking through uh, in Crusader, like I was showing a minute ago, and uh, there was a bunch of folders that should have been full of files that were empty. And so I think I have a problem. I've, I knew this could be a problem because I've had trouble with it before. And uh, NTFS, you know, uses a, uh, doesn't do file permissions the way Linux file systems do. And I chose to use ext4. I did a bunch of research and did some videos. I thought about using BTRFS and other different ones. I decided on ext4 because it would, it's, uh, it's stable. <coughs> They're all, well, <coughs> All the Linux file systems I've used, the XT2, 3, and 4, and LVMs are much more stable than NTFS, but uh, I've never, let's see, well, I've only a couple of times ever had a Linux file system break. I think three times since when I got into Linux in 2005 that I can think of. I have it actually break, uh, you know, really be broke and me not be able to fix it. I've seen I don't know how many. Not, I've had some of my own break, and I've a lot of the almost most of these old machines. When somebody gives me one, has a broken NTFS file system on it most of the time. Either it's broken or it's just full of viruses. But uh, and I've fixed them. You can. But of course, you when you get them fixed and they're full of viruses, you really end up having to reformat anyway. So a lot of times I fixed them anyway, just because I can't. I, I just can't pass up a challenge like that. But um, so here we are in the uh, um, anyway ext4. I just felt it would work best for me uh, for the way I'm going to do it here. So <clears throat> so that's why I've got the uh, five, uh, eight terabyte drive formatted as. So uh, I don't usually put anything in the description. This is going from the five terabyte, the whole thing, to the eight terabyte. And uh, so I told it to exclude cache and trash folders, and I didn't tell it to exclude anything else. And then include, uh, you can do only include or normal include. I left it on the default normal include. And I'm not doing remote, you know, I'm just plugging them both into the machine. Uh, you can do, uh, you know, network backups. And in here, I, w I thought, well, okay, I want the... The file permissions on the NTFS drive are all, they're automatically changed when you back up to it, uh, and I couldn't even see a way to change that, uh, and what, but it's good because it's all read and write, world read and writable, and that way no matter where you, and that's good because wherever you plug the drive in, on a Windows and Linux machine, you'll be able to use the files, read them, write them, whatever you need to do. So I thought, okay, if I just preserve all that then it should be good well it didn't work and I and it there was a bunch of files I saw that there was a lot of errors of files that could denied access to uh, I mean couldn't write them and stuff uh, maybe there was denied access I can't remember now I don't I guess I've got a few screenshots somewhere but that was back so far ago <laughs> it'd be too much time for me to find them so uh, I'm not going to preserve ownerships I'm not going to preserve permissions Preserve sim links. That would not be helpful, really, I don't think. Yeah, it would. Um, 
Okay, and then preserve spot device special files, super user only special files as they are. I don't know what will happen with that coming off of that NTFS. I think I'll take that off of there for now. What I'll eventually do is start backing straight up from this drive and others to the XT4, and I'll put that. I'll probably what I'm probably going to do is take that uh, um, <clears throat> the XT4 on the eight terabyte. I'll directly to the eight terabyte drive, and I'll probably take. I'm going to just take that five terabyte drive out of that case because. Uh, I didn't mention mention it just now, but the reason that it keeps acting up so bad is the poor design on the USB cable on these drives. Uh, the drives I haven't themselves are fine, except for the NTFS file system. But uh, can be you got to watch out uh, here. The uh, the cables. Uh, if you if, uh, NTFS file system, if you're writing to it and the power is turned off to it, it will. Uh, not just you know get a bad write, but it will off very often break the file system. It usually can be fixed, like I was saying, but you don't ever know for sure until you have to do it. And it happened to me three or four times already. Three, I'm certain of, and I fixed it. Um, but you have to have a Windows system to do that, and I don't even have a Windows system right now to do that with. So um, <coughs> it would really be a mess. So I thought I've got to get this. You know, back up, so, so finish setting it up. So, but the uh, the cable, the USB cable, it's a on the the end that plugs in. It's a male. They're both male ends, but on either end. But one's a standard uh, USB. I think it, what it be. I think it's called. I always forget my names of things. Um, <clears throat> anyway, the standard one, it's fine. It's it's a normal. Nor it doesn't. You know, it works great. But the other end, the one that plugs into the little box that the hard drive's in. It's a proprietary design. It's not a standard design that uh, of theirs. And uh, but for some reason they made the uh, the little ma the mail connector like only a quarter inch long. So when you uh, so when you plug it into the the drive box, it can wiggle very very easily. And uh, and I don't move it around. I've gone over this over I don't know how many times. I don't move it around a lot. Never have. It's always been sitting there on my uh, my computer rack. And, uh, you know, once in a while, the tables might get accidentally moved and it get wiggled and stuff. Um, and it has just loosened up to the point that it's just ready to fall out of there if you just breathe on it. And so if it moves, if it moves a little bit, you can just, even when they're brand new, you can move them enough you know, without even trying. Just take one finger and just touch it. Well, on this one anyway, you can move it enough to make it disconnect and, and suddenly lose power to the drive. Well, that's, that can... Uh, well, that's why it's not mounting up. I, like I, I think I said a minute ago, like three out of five times now, uh, of, re, of reboot ups, not reboots, but turn it off, go to bed, turn it back on in the morning, it doesn't mount up. And uh, <clears throat> and when it doesn't mount up, you can't just remount it. it you can, uh, I mean, what I do is I kind of make sure the cable's plugged in and all good, kind of, you know, make sure it's in the right place and uh, turn the power off. It won't just remount. Uh, I don't. Uh, I've tried unplugging and plugging the cables back in, and that usually causes them. It won't mount that way. It causes a mount error. Used to actually, I could I could do, check the cables, turn off the power to the uh, instead of unplugging and unplugging the AC adapter. I just turn off on and off a power strip for it. I turn it off at night so that it's not running when it's not being used, so that it can't. You know, like say if the you know sometimes we have thunderstorms and our power goes out. Well, if that happened, that could could in, actually break the NTFS file system when, you know, even though, cause just because it's, you know, the power going on and off. So I'd turn the power off to it every night. <clears throat> now, if you accidentally turn it off while it's being in the middle of a write, you could break it that way. But uh, I may have, well, I have accidentally turned it off a time or two, but I don't remember if I broke it, but I do remember, don't remember the exact details anymore of exactly what happened each time. But, um, Anyway, um, that short quarter inch end on there, it allows it to wiggle too easily, and that in turn uh, makes the little female 
connector. I've, if you've ever seen them and looked, you know, looked at them up close or got inside a computer and seen how they're made, you know, it's just thin sheet metal bent around into the shape of a connector. Well, it just opens it up and makes it loose, even looser than it already was. Now, all it needed to do is just be longer like a standard connector, and it should, would, have must, would have been just fine, I'm sure. <clears throat> and uh, and these little micro ones and mini ones, they're, the, uh, they're in the same situation except for two things. Well, one thing, they're, you notice they're made really tight. You can't hardly wiggle those things in any, almost any device except for I've got one of my phones that has been wiggled and moved around so much it's getting pretty loose the power connector for it <clears throat> that usb will power in data and that is because i leave them plugged in most of the time because i use them as cameras i don't use them as phones and uh i leave them plugged in even uh even when i move them around most of the time because uh if if i if i unplug them they won't last longer than 10 minutes and the and they'll run the battery down so um, I have to leave them plugged in to use them like as for to do these streams and stuff, because I, I stream the you know the video over the Wi-Fi to my com desktop computer that I'm on here and uh, and get it into OBS Studio. But um, and I I went ahead uh, and you know you might wonder why would why did I buy another Seagate drive? Well, because it uh, because of that problem it kind of makes them a a better deal than the other ones because the drives the failure rate of the actual drives that i've seen i've looked i've looked at reviews and you know for years i've watched the reviews they all have about the same and there i found a website and i don't know where it is right now like to show it but i found a website that big project where they actually uh, a place that used a lot of different kinds of hard drives for you know a data company i guess it was they they kept track of the failure the you know how the failure rates the actual hours minutes and seconds you know that they ran those drives, and they had a, a lot of different types of drives and a lot of different brands and uh, and uh, you know Western Digital and Seagate are neck and neck uh, as to far as you know the drive uh, the drives actually failing so they also had different you know like what is it. Uh, I don't know which brand it is. They have the red, green, and blue or whatever. They also tried out different ones like that. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, so I decided, because uh, it was a big decision to which, you know, what, what backup drive to buy. I, you know, I can't really, I mean, I, just, I don't want to spend three times the price if it's gonna uh, not going to be any better, any more dependable. Uh, you know, so um, finally I decided that, and I thought of my own history with hard drives over, you know, since I've been into computers since 98. And uh, <clears throat> it really doesn't matter. I've never, it doesn't really matter what drive. Some fail, some don't, you know. I mean, what brand. <clears throat> um, I've got dead drives of most of all the popular brands, and I've got drives that are run, still running <clears throat> and they're 10 years old, you know. <clears throat> well, that I've had for 10 years. And then there's some that were 10 years old when I got them that are still running. So anyway, I'm going on and on as I usually do. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm going to take, take uh, that's what's what's going on, wh why I'm doing all this. And so I need to try, and I'm going to try to let this thing run tonight. I mean, I'm going to let it run, planning on letting it run tonight. <clears throat> and uh, hopefully it will write all, all the files. Um. Uh, uh, I'm trying to um, think, trying to think through. I have been trying to think through what. Uh, well, I, I, you know, I forgot all what was going on until today when I, I looked at this once earlier today and thought, okay, this is. Um, <coughs> I think that if I just turn these things off, maybe it'll it'll be able to copy the files. If not, if NT, uh, I, the thing is, I know I've looked. I've never ran into a file on the on the NTFS right there NT. Seeing that right there made me think of it. <clears throat> on the five terabyte that's formatted in TFS, I haven't run into any files that had any uh, that were logged down in any way. You know, so I don't see any reason why they shouldn't be copyable from the NTFS drive to the XT4 drive. Uh, the only th problem I can see with you know would be that if it's trying to preserve permissions, it gives it an error. Things like and you know permissions ownerships and things like that. I know from experience that. Uh, 
they just don't play nice together. You know, they don't work together. Uh, so, uh, so I'm just going to not worry about, uh, but if I end up with a bunch of files with root user privileges, then I can always go back and fix that. Uh, it may be a pain, but not getting them at all is even worse. So, uh, cause I'm doing it in root mode, but I've always ran, uh, you know, um, uh, lucky backup in root mode because you have to to get it to run like i said to run it as a chrome job automatically and uh <clears throat> to have auto backups and i've never had any problems with my file permissions getting changed from user don to root you know when they're not now if they're a root root user file in the first place then yeah it's going to end up being root when you copy it normally i back up to another drive on the same system as what i always did before like that old older system I was talking about, that dual core, it has like four or five, maybe five drives in it. And, uh, <clears throat> and I, I kept adding drives to because I ran out of space for backup, so I'd add another drive. And the big box, I had plenty of room and, and I had a big power supply. So, uh, But now all those drives are pretty much full. And uh, I had always planned, I had planned to, you know, back copy all that stuff over to the five terabyte drive. And then clean those up and use them for other things, but use, and but uh, then I realized I'll fill it up, <laughs> you know, the, the, within two weeks as soon as I get all those backed up. So I didn't do it. But that's another thing I may I may end up being able to do that now. But first things first. Uh, but anyway, yeah, the what I think I'm gonna do. There's two things. I'll either put that five terabyte in uh, a machine, maybe this Lenovo i5, the quad core here and reformat it and, and let it be well I don't need a five the thing is I don't need a four and a half terabyte drive as my system drive though or what I really need is plenty of backup so I may put end up putting right now I'll leave the eight terabyte as a USB drive and put the five terabyte in some machine that I, I was thinking about building a backup server just for files but I can't use all, most of the machines, almost all the machines I have are, make too much heat and too much noise to run them in here. There's only one thing I got that doesn't, uh, and that's just I have a laptop with a broken screen that could be a perfect, but only thing is it's only got, it doesn't have gigabit Ethernet. You know, it's got 100, me, 100 megabit uh, <clears throat> uh, wired Ethernet. And I do, I want to use wired, you know, I mean, I could use wireless, but it's not very, you know, we worried about it uh, getting data write errors you know and stuff anything can happen with, on wi-fi so and it's only 56 megabit wi-fi so that'd be even slower you know half ha about half the speed unless i go and actually buy something uh, well i mean a usb adapter wouldn't uh that's the thing with a laptop you can't just pop a pci card in it you know you, the only thing i can actually think of is maybe buying a new 700 megabit um, Wi-Fi adapter or something like that because my routers will do well this one here will do 1200 megabits this D-Link and the other one my TP-Link that I'm going to put out in the garage with to be a wireless repeater for the uh, with the Net Pro Max put it out in the garage just to get, just to get the noise and heat out of here <clears throat> it's in here now at my web server um, it'll do about 750 megabits on the wireless but and uh, anyway, um, let's go back to, this is why I didn't already do this because my brain is still not working too good this week. So I haven't been doing much work lately, but I'm, I decided I need to do this. <clears throat> it's more important than finishing up my, uh, you know, OBS. I still want to get, I haven't got my, getting my, uh, auto updates turned back on and all that stuff. Anyway, all the other things I've been doing. But uh, so turn off preserve ownership, turned off from preserve permission, preserve sim links. Yeah, I think keep a sim link as a sim link because if you, I really don't know what would happen if I said don't preserve them. Uh, it may copy the file. What it might do is uh, instead of writing it as a sim link, it would copy that file so then you'd have a, the original copy and then wherever normally you would have a sim link sim link is a link to a file somewhere you know uh, then you would have that file copied again 
And that would be, if you really did restore that ba those backups, then that could just really mess things up. So I think I'll leave that like it is. Uh, preserve device special files. I'm going to not, like I said, since this is in already on an NTFS drive and that hasn't been done, I know it can't be done right <clears throat> between Linux, going from Linux to NTFS. So I'm not going to turn that on. And preserve hard links. Well, there it tells you more about what they are. So that, that are hard linked together on the source will be hard linked together on the destination warning. These files have to be included in the transfer set. I'm just not going to preserve any, any of either one of those. Copy sim links as sim links. Yeah, now that makes sense to do that. And I don't want to change any of that stuff. Uh, I like leave that like it is. Let's see what it says though. With this option, R sync will transfer numeric groups and user IDs rather than using user and group names. I'd rather have user and group names because I can't remember what those numbers mean. Okay, and besides that, it wouldn't work with NTFS. <coughs> the user, the actual username would, would make more sense to the NTFS file system. You know, like even root would be better than all those Linux numeric codes. Names and mapping them at both ends. Yeah, so if these things mostly would pertain to backing up uh, a Linux system to an, an Linux file system, but since I've already backed up all these files that I'm getting here to an NTFS file system, uh, then everything's reversed and a lot of it's nullified. So, okay, so I want to, and I'd never leave that delete files on the destination unless you want to make a uh, <clears throat> uh, mirror of what you've got. Now, I back up from different, and this is always on by default with Lucky Backup. So when you get in, if you start using Lucky Backup, the first thing you want to do when you're setting up your profile is to uncheck this delete uh, the files. See, it says delete the files on the destination that don't exist on the source. And, uh, Recurse directories has to be selected, so on. Goes away, <clears throat> but yeah, I never want that to, for the way I back up because I back up from multiple sources to the same backup drive, and most people I think would. So uh, I don't know why that's the default. That's a dangerous thing that could. Uh, if you, you see now, if you you set up a new profile to, and, and you're using your backup drive that you've already got stuff on, it could it could it would delete everything except for what you're backing up in this set that could be terrible so now the only thing that could save you is if you made subfolders to do this backup in you know uh, uh, then you would only lose what was in that subfolder there so but in um, recurse into directories definitely uh, skip near destination files that will make it a lot faster and it certainly won't hurt your, uh, it shouldn't, most of the time, it wouldn't hurt your, uh, you know, your backup. You most of, almost, most of the time, there are times when the newer file might actually not be, <laughs> the, the file that is labeled as newer might actually not be newer, but in general, you're going to be all right with that. That's, all that's up, that's up to you, you know, what you think you need, and then I don't, I never did quite, that, I just leave that off, and I think it's off by default. Uh, I don't really know what that means. I don't know how I've never used that. And now use the destination is FAT or NTFS. Uh, I'm not using that now, but I did whenever I backed up to the uh, five terabyte drive. I don't know why I pointed over there. That's not it. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> um, but the, and you do need to turn that on to get things to work right when you. Uh, back up to an NTFS drive, although I have forgotten and I never got any warnings or anything. I may have probably had some funky file permissions though. And then attempt super user activities. Now that should work just fine because I'm doing that as super user, but I guess if you don't check it, you wouldn't try. So, and I don't, rem I, it was on when I opened it up this morning. I don't know if I had not checked that before, but, uh, anyway, that's what I'm going to do there. And, uh, and then also execute uh, 
I don't think I've ever used that. You could you could have a little script you might want to run or something. I don't know. This is a powerful application. Uh, I never have run into anything that I would actually want to do. Let's see. You uh, use the boxes to stop task ex execution on error. Okay. But you can also add a. You can have a script so you could go there and add a script file. Tell it to run it. Uh, <coughs> oh. It's so weird how that does that. You click add, and you'd think it would open up a dialog. No, you click that, open it up, it'll put it in the window, and then you click add. If you don't, it won't put it in there. And I, I, I've had so much trouble with that. Because once it's in the window, you know you think it's going to do it, but it doesn't. So this is actually maybe all I have to do to get my backup to work. Uh, didn't have any, And I just probably didn't have to talk for 30, 40 minutes here, but I, uh, but I get tongue-tied some turned around sometimes anyway uh, so that was I click validate in it now this can say this everything seems to be okay it tells you the command that's gonna run see it what this uh, lucky backup does is build this command to run it you know to run in our sync uh, that's what it does that's basically what it boils down to so you could copy that to the clipboard and save and and run it in the terminal or save the command in case you ever want to just run it in the terminal you could always um, run it in the terminal I never have done it I always use lucky backup but uh, <clears throat> you could do that um, if for some reason you just wanted you know maybe well if you had an older machine and you didn't want the GUI running you know but the auto backup doesn't open the GUI anymore it used to well it just used to have it running in the background and you'd see the icon up in the top of the machine of the desktop uh, but anyway it says it's okay so I'm going to say okay and this time I'm going to go ahead and select that because uh, add it to the group and then what it should, will do is it'll run these two first and then it'll run that one um, and uh, <coughs> um, I was going to say, I'll probably, well, I don't think I'm going to be doing it right now. Um, of course, I can't make a video of doing it because this is the machine I'm streaming on. This is the one that well, I, it has to be rebooted to get it going. I mean, I could hit start. Uh, I think I will do this right now. I'll do that. Uh, you can click uh, dry run and click run. We'll do that. And it dry run goes through way, way faster than the actual thing, so... And I've already, there shouldn't be much to be backed up. I mean, I know there's these two videos I just made. I'm making one right now and one little test video I did earlier. But uh, <clears throat> uh, we'll see if it comes up. Yeah, it's always a good idea to do a dry run because even if you've ran the, well, see, I've ran this before, but um, didn't work like I expected. And so... Anyway, it's a good idea to do that before you just go off, unless you just want to find out the next, you know, by the hard way later, you know, be disappointed later. Oh, it's a good idea. Okay, so it went through there, and now, see, it's uh, saying that it's simulation. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's backing up. Um, I don't know if it's the first one or the second one, but it hasn't got to the one of the five terabyte to the eight terabyte. That's the one we're waiting on there. Uh, that's the one I'm interested in. Now, see, I don't have, I know, see there, it's backing up cache files, and that's really useless, backing up Mozilla Firefox cache files. That's really useless. I keep meaning to go back in there and turn that off and uh, those profiles. I didn't, I keep forgetting that's on. There's no telling how much cache. Because it'll just keep building up and building up, filling up your drive for nothing. I keep meaning to turn that off and then and delete all those dot cache Mozilla files out of the backup drive. Because you know, as much as you, much as I watch uh, surf the internet watching videos, there's always going to be bits and pieces of videos in there, and that's big files, you know. So, and they do get deleted automatically out of Firefox every so often, but. Uh, I've, I've seen them build up. Let's see. Uh, dot cache Mozilla Firefox. Let's see what we got in there. I mean, how much we got in there. 
Big uh, expansion drive. Let's see. Yeah, see, I'm not backing. Now, I was very careful when I made this these profiles. I wanted to be able to back up into my downloads folder, pictures, and so on. And I didn't want all those folders that start with a dot on this on the root of my backup drive because it gets really confusing to try to find things. So I tried to organize it real best I could. And there it is right there. That's see it's on top now because I've got it organized. The ones you know, the newest files on top. So that's the, the folder bin just that I'm writing to right there. That I know why five but now this one has all my dot. And there's the cache folder, all my dot file dot folders I call them. Um, so we'll go in there and just see what's in there. Keyboard. Oh yeah, because even just running now. See, just running that um, simulation is slowing down my uh, reaction on my computer. So make sure everything looks okay. Oddly enough, see you don't see. Uh, there's what's running, and there's only one thing that's even, well, now it's jumping back and forth, 1%, 2%, but that's not a whole lot. It is still really puts a penalty, you know, it really works the machine. And, uh, okay, now, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, I don't know how come it works it, but it doesn't show up in the system monitor as if it's working it all that hard. But it, it really somehow... Just really makes the machine not want to, you know, respond well. Now that is a profile. There's a cache too. That's the one of the reasons I haven't done it is because I really don't know. Of course, trash. Yeah, okay. But a lot of some of this stuff I don't know what it is, and I'm worried to delete it. I'm sitting here thinking maybe I'd delete it right now while I'm here, but I'm so tired I don't know what heck. Okay, and I already see straight, so I'm not going to do that. And I clicked on that entries folder, and it is still not opened up yet. So I better quit clicking through. I went to the drive, and uh, <clears throat> the backup drives, they're, all, they're pretty slow at loading when there's a lot of, there may be a lot of files in there. So let's see if I can get out of there. Sometimes whenever... If I try to do too much, it'll allow to crash a Crusader. But uh, it's taking a long time. I hit the back arrow button. That, that should take you back a couple of folders. Uh, let's just hang on, unless it's going to slow down the machine too much. See, Crusader's not showing that it's in real trouble. It's, it is using some resources there, but it's not in trouble. But... Uh, See, oh, it, it is in trouble though. I may have to close it. I may have to, of course, close it myself. Yeah, now the, uh, see, now the, uh, that gamut, I hate when that happens. Didn't expect that. <laughs> Just quit trying to do things. Uh, okay, the, oh, well, that's finally done at least. Okay, let's go back over there. Yeah, Crusader's acting up. Okay, we're going to end the process while we can. It didn't uh, It didn't want to go in that folder for some reason. And I think it's just because I'm making a video and I have Lucky Backup was running that uh, uh, simulation. Crusader's taking out a good sweet time at shutting down. Sometimes you have to flat kill something when it gets re really unruly. But in process is a nice way to shut it down. I won't kill it unless I have to. Let's go over here and look at... Uh, it's quit running at least, so it's not taxing the system. But uh, 5 terabyte to 8 terabyte. Boy, it sure went through that simulation fast. But uh, skipping non-regular file. Oh, config. Huh. 
Well, I actually do want the system files. KP stream MP4, some sort of a video file that I don't know what it is. Huh. But it's not in a cache folder. It's an M player folder. Just a few though. So it didn't have a whole bunch of error. Looks like they're not gonna work. And up here, my backups I haven't been seeing noticing any big problems with my regular backups. All those cache files, though, just look at all those cache files that would have gotten written. And they get right, written every time because I got it set to do that. <clears throat> I wonder if I have uh, some. Oh, I thought it was done. I just now realized it must not have been actually completely done because when I clicked, I thought it was done. and I But I right after I clicked it, I saw that it said abort. So that's okay. Need to quit to... Uh, now, see, Crusader's still in trouble. It didn't ever quit. So instead of doing in process, I'm going to do uh, pizza. Yeah, you have to go there. Uh, I'm going to just have to do kill. Because you, you, you can't... Uh, it's not going to just come back, most likely. So... Uh, I will leave Crusader closed for now. And, uh, <coughs> but I think my backup, my, hopefully my backup will work as I intended. <coughs> There's another thing I need to do. <coughs> Let me get a cough drop. My throat is just flat sore now all of a sudden. See all these ones that say uh, Dawn's Alcatel A45L, you know, phone. I've got, they're up. I don't know why they're in the backwards order like that, but maybe it's just the way I put them in there. But phone one, two, and three. I have two running, you know, the video phone that has video on it. Um, that's number two. And uh, what, what these are for... I always back up the internal storage and my SD cards. Um, and I do it different ways, but sometimes I put them in, I turn these on and just manually run them. But what I do is take the SD card out. Of course, you can't do the internal storage that way. You have to do that over. Um, how have I been doing that? Let's look at well, the SD card. I take it and put it in. Uh, USB, take it out of the phone, put it in the USB adapter, and plug it into this machine. So let's see. Yeah, and then that's how that is. Me it run media, and then <clears throat> I have a folder on the back on the five terabyte drive, just for that for each one of those sources. And uh, I don't have any excludes. I'm not doing remote. Now, that's what I've been thinking about doing for a long time is setting this up uh, to do it over the, you know, because the phones, you know, have wireless. They're wireless, so I can just do it over the network. Uh, and as all I have to do is turn on, let's see, I have pretty much the same settings that I just set. You see now that says destination is uh, fat NTFS, <clears throat> and of course that's because it's going to the five terabyte drive, <coughs> and it's NTFS. So uh, taking them out is such a pain because I have them all rubber band into my tripods and everything. So I thought I should set that up to do it wirelessly. I can actually. But um, I was debating about doing it, you know, now in this video, but I'm so tired. I, don't, I can't, I may not be able to think straight to do it. But um, I made a video on phone two today, and I 
I made sure it uploaded to Google Photos, and usually I just let it upload to Google Photos and then transfer it from there to YouTube, but it still hasn't shown up in my Google Photos, even though it says it's finished, so um, thought I might get it on this hard drive, on my backup drive, and then I could just upload it, you know. Let's see now, the uh, internal storage, oh, you can plug them in to the USB cable and get the internal storage. That's what I think I was doing that, that way, in that case. Yeah, USB. So that's how I was backing those up. I was plugging that cable in, USB cable in, and getting it mounted up, and then backing it up. still a pain and I think I could do that over the uh, over the network too well, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and close this now so I don't want to mess it up and I don't want it using up more resources but I'm going to see yeah okay I remember the IP I just I'm trying to think if I remember the IP there's another way I sometimes do it and that's with FileZilla. I used to do it with Crusader, but Crusader doesn't support SFTP anymore. But uh, once I get FileZilla opened up, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm trying to listen to my my st <coughs> stream. And I don't hear any sound over there. I better go over here and look and make sure I haven't messed something up. Got sound. It probably froze up, I think. It shows to be a good stream. And counter's counting. Sometimes the video freezes up. So I had to reload the stream there, the preview of the stream. Sometimes my audio is not, I think it's working and it's not. There we go. I just, it'd be the one time I don't have my backup mic plugged in and it, and it quits working. Okay, so I'm going to go to 192.168.0.1.2. And I need a user, username of root. And let's see if I can remember the password. Oops. Maybe that was it. If not, I'll have to go get it out. And port 2222. And this is, is what you do with this. It's an app called SSH Droid that I have running over there. I uh, might have to use just port 22. Let me get my the password out because that's the thing I'm not sure about. <clears throat> remember, kind of think I remember it, but it didn't work, so... Maybe I don't. Of course, I could have the IP address wrong. <clears throat> I'm going to open up the browser and make sure I know the... Oh, wait, I don't have to do that. Okay. 192.168.0.194. Now you can see, I'm looking at my uh, source for the video. 192.168.0.194. So, I think it, uh, it could be the port. Maybe this app doesn't work. With, let me, well, I might have mistyped. Password. I'll try the password again. Uh, 
I think I remembered the password right, though. I guess you have to use just maybe it'll work with port 22. I know. Maybe you can't use the root password. Let's try. Try regular user. That's it. You got to use your regular user, <clears throat> not the root user. <clears throat> I got it backwards. I was trying. I thought I remembered which one you have to use. <clears throat> I swear when I first started using that app, you could use either one. Maybe they changed that. Okay, so... I logged right in on that side. Now, on this side, I need to get to my backup drive. Let's see. I think it's run. No. No. Oh, I'm already in the backup drive. Uh, so I just need to get to where the phones are. Phone 2. There we go. Internal storage and, um, and the <clears throat> now SD card O. I should have, yeah, some videos in there. Now you see that's, if there's, um, there's quite a few videos and pictures that I have may not have backed up. I don't know how long that will end up taking. So I think I'll go... Um, I'm going to go find the onboard card first. There. I think that is the uh, onboard. I don't know why it's one and the other one's... <laughs> but... Um, So I want to go ahead and select all those and then download. Now, of course, the files are already there, so I'm going to do overwrite if different size or source is newer. Always use this action. Now, when you try to do, of course, there wasn't really anything much at all to write there. But when you try to do uh, large files like videos, well, <clears throat> I actually got on my old Fedora 14 machine and tried to use Crusader because I like it better, and it, I'd forgotten that I actually have trouble with that. It uh, acts up. Now, I'm thinking this one here writes pretty quick, but it's it's it doesn't work the way I'm used to, and I. I tend to be worried that I'm going to make mistakes. Um, <clears throat> phone 2, SD card. I would like to set up that. That's hard, though. You have to set up a pre-shared key and all that stuff uh, and get it put into uh, Lucky Backup. Yeah, I'm not, I'm too tired to try. I keep wanting to do it, and then I back out every time because it's I know it's, it's hard for me to think through it and get it right. I usually have to go find the how tos and uh, download. I don't like leaving a bunch of files selected. I'm always scared I'm going to delete something. But uh, <clears throat> um, to get that, I've done it before, but uh, it's been a while year or two or more. I generally don't do backups over the network much um, because files are so big these days and everything and, and most of my uh, well I, most of my machines were 100 megabit connections it just got too slow to do it. <clears throat> I used to do it a lot but uh, now that uh, I've got 
Most my main machines that I'm using most of the time are gigabit connection, gigabit routers, and everything. I'm wanting to start doing that again because it was so convenient. Uh, well, after ever since I bought the five terabyte drive, I got to where instead of setting all the network up stuff, I, and the other thing is, is that uh, Fedora is harder to set up to do SFTP now than it used to be. That, and I'm kind of more worried about the security risk. Uh, so I don't even have SCFTP and set up and installed on this machine here at all. I don't have a SFTP server is what I mean. So I can't connect to it. <clears throat> and um, since I had the 5 terabyte backup USB drive, I've just been... That is, it's nice in a way, especially if the cable wasn't such a screwy mess. You can just, pl you know, unplug it from this machine, plug it into another machine and do your backups. And that's also the first time I realized the problem with those cables when I started doing that. I think that I was doing that backing up my my server, my web server, and uh, I don't know that it actually happened while I was doing that, but I remember around that time was one of the first times of that drive. I think I did that or something and then put it all back to normal and then the next time I tried to, uh, you know, reboot the, my machine the next day and tried to get on the drive on the backup drive it, uh, it the NTFS file system was actually broke and I had to fix it so um, oh well I was uh, but back to what I'm about backing up like I'm doing right now I used to use Crusader and not not too long ago I was making a video and I said I'm just going to show how wonderful that is and I went and I started trying to do this back up a phone over videos over the F SFTP with Crusader and it ran along very happily for about 10 or 20, 30 minutes, and then it just broke the connection, you know, quit working. <clears throat> and I remembered, oh, yeah, that's what had started happening. But I think there's something better, actually, about the way FileZilla does its connections, and I think it will probably do just fine. I do know that it writes a lot faster. It writes uh, more along the lines of the way. That's one thing great about Lucky Backup and R-Sync is it writes really fast, and I guess that's why it taxes the machine so much too. But uh, FileZilla writes pretty darn fast too. So, uh, you know, I, I probably, I think I backed these videos that I'm, it's fixing, the, I don't know when it'll get to the videos. It's obviously not doing videos right now. They're writing too fast. But uh, when it gets to them, you'll know it because it'll slow down and start writing, you know, taking a while to write the files. But uh, I haven't, normally I try to keep it backed up, the phones, you know, backed up and delete the videos off of the SD cards. But I haven't, I haven't been wanting to take them out of the tripods. And so I'm not quite sure how much I have on there. But not only can you do your backups, but you can delete the files. Uh, like I said, it used to be so much more. Um, it's just the way the navigating the folders works and doesn't work. It doesn't work for me very well because it doesn't work like Crusader <coughs> uh, in here. And and the deleting files and all that is very different. And you got to be really careful in. Uh, we well, got to be real careful. Period. But it's just, um, I can uh, I can just do so much better. I, I, it's just ingrained in my mind how it, how it works in Crusader. But it's just not. It's just flat not available anymore since Fedora twenty three at least. So um, that's when I had. To, I've always known about FileZilla for years and years, and never really cared for it too much. And actually, years ago, I think it used to break connections and stuff more. But uh, I do know I always had trouble with accidentally renaming or sometimes deleting files because of the way I use keyboard shortcuts and stuff. It it does it does something funky or my fingers very often slip off the mouse or or click when I don't mean to. They jerk, and it, in this app it causes me real trouble. So I have to really be careful. I try to not like see right there. That's still selected up there, and I'd like to get it unselected. But then when I start saying, oh, I better unselect that, that's when sometimes I make one of those bad mistakes. So I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> it's all working. Everything's fine. Just keep my mouse pointer away from, you know, the folders because I don't need to actually do anything right now. 
Now this file might be a video. I can't actually see. Oh, up here. Yes, it is. Up here in the top, there's a readout of the files that you're copying. It's a video. <clears throat> and uh, so, yes, yeah, see, they take a little longer. But hopefully we won't have any. Uh, it's, what was happening is any of the files that were bigger in Crusader, like three, you know, three uh, gigabyte files and things like that, two and a half, three gigabytes or more, they were the ones that it would hang up on and lose connection and not finish writing. So, um, and then I remember the last time I tried it on the video, and I was like, well, holy crap, now I can't do that anymore. And then I finally remembered later, probably a day or two later, well, FileZilla, the last thing I remember is that it worked fine and it do, you know, doesn't break like that, break the connection. And also, I think that uh, if I would go to the trouble to set up Lucky Backup, uh, it wouldn't either, because I, I remember the times the one t I had a couple of re remote backups, you know, network backup set up, and like say to back up my server and stuff. And I remember, seems like I remember them working really well once I got it set up. So if I would set up those profiles to do it over SSH, and see, I get all this information in there. The way I just had to manually type it in, get it in there and saved, and then I don't ever have to type it again. Don't ever have to remember it. Just, just uh, all I have to do is um, I probably would still manually run those particular ones because you need to have the. Uh, this only works with the phones if you have the SSH server turned on. And in my case, I'm using one called SSH Droid. I'm sure there's a few others, but it works really well other than those problems I was talking about. But I don't think that has to do with that app. I think it has to do with the desktop programs I'm using to do the copy. But um, of course it's not going to be as fast. Well, it's not even going to be as fast as a 100 megabit uh, wired connection because these phones um, I have seen them get up to about, uh-oh, trans, it's failing, failed after transfer bytes, what does it say, connection timeout after 20 seconds of inactivity, transfer failed after transferring so-and-so bytes, but it's still writing, disconnected from server, Connecting to the server. It's disconnecting and reconnecting. Get the file. At least this app tells you what's going on. You might be able to figure it out. Connection timed out. So I don't know. It's still it's still going though. It reconnected and it's still going. And I guess that's what Crusader doesn't do. It doesn't uh, reconnect. New directory. <clears throat> well, I'm guessing that some of these videos failed. <coughs> though they they probably got broken in the middle of the transfer. Guess if I read that whole syntax there, I might be able to tell. Get I don't know. What I'm thinking is, is it uh, it's fail, still failing on on some of these bigger videos? I don't know why it would do that. Um. Well, I never did know why I did it in Crusader either. But it uh, <clears throat> looked to me like it was just writing away, and then all of a sudden saw that error up there. Um, I, don't, I mean, I could stop it, but I don't. I think I'll wait and let it keep running. And I mean, I could always just re 
redo it again, right? And then um, I could just do the videos folder. It seems to be the only thing giving trouble. Could just do it again, and then it will know automatically. You know, it'll see which ones are smaller than the source file, and then it'll start again trying to write them again. But it may, if it fails again, then it's going to be a useless thing. I may have done all this before and forgot in here in uh, FileZilla. So that makes me really want to try to set up the, uh, well, that's running. Let's see if I can, I think I can open Lucky back up and just look, you know, <clears throat> edit the profiles without running it and it won't tax the machine. I think what I would have to do, I'm starting to remember, you have to have a pre-share key. You have to make a, uh, I think I may have some more set up on this uh, private private key and a, and a public key, you know. I think I may have that set up on this machine, but the phones don't. Uh, and uh, But you do it in the terminal. And um, well, I remember now what I had been thinking about doing. I was thinking about using remote phone top app a des remote desktop app and opening up a terminal I have I, I think I still have a terminal app on those phones or at least I might not on all of them but anyway if I have a terminal app then I just open it up and then copy and paste the commands here on the desktop into the remote terminal and uh, oh, you know what SSH droid might allow you to get a remote shell I could try using uh, <coughs> putty or something like that and uh, actually I could just use I need I need to go find the command I've been meaning to do that for my server you know the the admin app that I use uh, it has a remote shell built into it but it's not it works it's funky it doesn't work some things don't work right and uh, just some of the features aren't the same and um, so I uh, yeah, and, and you can do a remote shell with just pretty much any terminal app. You just need to know the command. So I can just do that <clears throat> um, and then set up a free shared key and all that stuff. I, again, I think I'm too tired, but I'm going to, I'm, I'm thinking about it and curious. So I'm going to, so uh, this one would be the one I would use the, uh, yeah, the SD card to the uh, on phone two to the four point five terabyte. Okay, now here's remote. Now if I click on use remote, destination would be I would my remote would be the source. So then I would know to put dawn and then remote module or sync password file. Now that's not how you how I would do it. I don't think. Yeah, here it is down here. Uh, I would do SSH port and uh, did I use 2222 or did I use yeah I sure did okay 2222 well, on here I do 22 though no not for no the app I'm using I would do 2222 and then the private key file okay and I've actually that's actually not that complicated now that I have a better understanding of all that stuff only thing is, is which private key? Oh, the private key. Well, I thought you stored the private key on your machine. You really don't. Well, I guess I use my pri I'm thinking I need the private key uh, of the phone. That's what I'm thinking. But yeah, I'd have to read up on that again as which private key do I want? Mine on this machine or the private key from the phone? It would make, but you don't share the private key. You share the public key. So I guess I would go to my private key on this machine and so it doesn't make sense. Well, yeah, like I, like I said a while ago, that just confirmed that I'm too tired to think through that. But actually, okay, but that encourages me that it's not as hard as I was thinking either. But this is all set up. I'll let, there's one thing I forgot to do is check my Chrome job. Okay. Um, well, that's the email when something happens. 
What did I click on? Schedule. Okay, now it's already set up, but let's just click on modify to look at it. Yeah, 10 minutes after the reboot, it will run. Okay, that's what I want. And it's already uh, been chromed, so I don't need to chrome it again. You can, just to be safe. View current chrome tab. There it is. This is what you're doing. You, it, it makes these this command and puts it in your, um, sets it up as a chrome job in your um, chrome config file, wherever it is. Let's see. User bin, lucky backup. No question, skip critical. It'll just skip it if it's a critical error. Root it, lucky backup profiles default done, the one that I'm in right now. And uh, root it, lucky backup default done. Uh, last Chrome log, it's going to log it. End of uh, lucky backup entries. So that's what it does. You can click on Chrome it and say it's updated. Now you know for sure it should run. And as far as setting up my <coughs> phone to be backed up automatically, of course, it wouldn't be done unless, it'd be skipped unless you had the phone running and uh, SSH droid running. And since I'm as tired as I am, yes, yes, so. Yeah, because I did all that Chrome job stuff. <coughs> so it would... Um, Yeah, I'll have to do that next time. <laughs> next time on trying to get my backups set up and straightened up. Yeah, that would be all right. I mean, you could just set all those uh, lucky backup profiles up to, to always look for those phones and back them up if they're available. But I thought, well, that would just be, they're hardly ever going to be on at the right time when it runs, you know. I mean, that would be really random to, and really hard for that to, them to line up. So I think it would be better to run them manually. Uh, I can just always click, you know, check and uncheck the ones I want to run. I'm not going to run but one at a time because it would be too much. Uh, the phones, uh, I think I was in the middle of saying, most I've ever seen them do is about 72, 73 megabits. They generally run between uh, 15 and 40 megabits and so and actually right now I, you know I could really <laughs> speed up this I bet by uh, it's sharing bandwidth in the phones you know uh, Wi-Fi chip is sharing the bandwidth between streaming that that camera app and doing this backup right now so um, yep let's see yeah, it's still working. It's a bit behind, but it's working. Uh, I don't have a real need for that right now. So, um, only only thing as far as uh, to see, to even know if, I can kind of tell if this, what it looks to me like is that that file, 2190210, You can't search in that window, I don't think. Let's see. No. I was going to say if I could search through that window and see if that file's been restored. Well, I can see. Okay, that was the file it was trying to write. Oh, it ends in 029. Yeah. I think I read it wrong a minute ago. Let's see. But I can't see the file name. It's too uh, cut off down here. If I okay, let's see if I, uh, I don't know if I, it doesn't act like it wants to let me get a hold of it and spread it out. I thought you could do that. Oh, failed transfers. Well, there's no failed transfers. Huh. Successful. It may not just show. May, no, I think it does show them as it goes. I don't think it waits till the end to show you the failed transfer. But I don't know which one it's writing right now. Oh, now it'll let me do that. Oh, that's what it's writing right now. The file ending in uh, 029. Okay, so even though it uh, connection timed out after it failed, but then it disconnected and then it 
connect it again automatically, which is something that Crusader doesn't do. So that's why I guess that it, that's what I was trying to say earlier. That's why I guess the Crusader just completely failed on writing these files. Oh, there's an, there's the file name right there again. Okay. Now I'm starting to catch on. So it's kept on trying. Then what about the first time it failed? Was it the same file? No, it was a different file. Uh, 735 and then 735 I guess it finally finished it then yep it sure did so maybe I don't have a problem but just to be safe I think I will tr just run it again and see if it if it starts writing <laughs> big files again I'll know it there was a mess up then. but if it doesn't if it just zips right on through there then I'll know for sure that I got it but I need to, I really have been wanting to get these um, videos backed up over to my backup drive and then uh, get them off of the phone so that it, they don't fill up right when I'm trying to make videos, you know. I used to, when I first I got the phones, that's how I made all my videos is right there on the phones with open camera before I even learned how to do, <clears throat> you know, Wi-Fi streaming with them and all that stuff before I found the apps. And also, I, I think that, well, yeah, I guess that was before I started using OBS Studio. Or before I, I might have known about it, but I wasn't using it all the time like I do now. You know? And, like I said, I didn't know how to stream them. Uh, I was using OBS Studio for a while before I discovered how to stream the uh, phones over the Wi-Fi to OBS Studio. But, uh, okay, so I think they are working, but this one is a, evidently a rather large file. It's taken a while. It's, it says it has, surely it doesn't have 17 minutes left. It could. Um, like I said, it's not a real fast connection over these phones. What I should do, what I'm going to do is um, go ahead and turn off the phone app, and that way it won't have so much to do there. Let's see. And I guess I'll leave it there. Because <clears throat> I'm going to turn off the phone. So, uh, the, uh, not turn off the phone app, turn off the phone camera app on the phone. Uh, yeah. So I can't show you that because uh, I'm turning it off. Okay. <clears throat> thing bad about this now is I'm really tired <laughs> and I have no idea how uh, how far I am in the middle of writing all these files and everything um, I suppose I could look through this folder and see where I'm at Let's see oh <gasps> I've, I have I do remember do, backing these things up before over the Wi-Fi, and I remember letting it run for like three hours before. Well, that's when I had a lot. Oh, it finished that when I went to another one. I mean, I used to fill up the 64-gigabyte uh, SD card, so I was might have been writing 50 gigabytes of files, you know, of video files. So that's why it would take that long. Okay, there's my video files, and right now I am writing... I was still writing. I thought it had changed to another file. Still writing one 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 o oh, two nine one 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 o oh, two nine. There it is. It's on top. Hmm. Does that mean it's the last one or the first? I know it ain't the first one. What order are they in? Oh, they're in alphabetical order. I guess I'd have to get in the same folder over here to see what's going on. Can I do that while it's writing? Yeah. One 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 oh two 
two nine. Now this is my backup drive, so there is going to be a lot more on this side than there are on this side. There should be there's a lot on that side, though. A lot of those are not uh, videos. A lot of them are JPEG. That open camera, you know, it saves uh, its videos and its uh, still images to the same folder. So one 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 zero oh, two nine. Now, what if I do last modify? Two ten nineteen. That's today. So that's the way I want it. Two ten nineteen. It looks. It's for all intents and purposes. It looks to me like. Um, it's the last file to be written. From everything I can tell about it. So maybe it's not, uh, I knew I didn't, I shouldn't, uh, have, you know, like more than three to five videos is what I was expecting. Well, it was more than five. One, two, three, four, five. Now some of them, one or two, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, there's, well, there's more than that. Ten, twelve. Some of them may have already been backed up, but not because of me having trouble. Some of them got backed up, and some of them didn't, and I didn't know which ones were which. And I also knew that my backup drive had some halfway copied files for me trying to do it the last time in Fedora 14 with Crusader. So uh, <coughs> this should correct those problems. So should just overwrite the ones that are, um, you know, undersized. <coughs> you know, like I said, there's going to be plenty in here that that were already there. You know, it's getting close to being done. So we'll see if it's. Uh, I was getting ready to. I was almost thinking about just canceling it because I'm tired, but I hate to do that. Now it seems like it hung up. It didn't mess up. It sure did look like, yeah, it messed up. But it reconnected, I think. Yeah. So I don't know why it disconnects and then reconnects. That must be something... I thought maybe it was because the phone was going to sleep. That's what I remember. I had decided that the phone was going to sleep, and it was causing that. Oh, and I turned off the camera app. The camera app makes it, keeps that phone from going to sleep. I just remembered that. And I think my big problem was that the phone would go to sleep, and that would stop the transfers from happening, you know. It would put that app to sleep. But inadvertently, I, I just now realized I was keeping it from going to sleep by running that camera app, even though that might slow down the transfer, although it quit and then started up again. I mean, but now I'm thinking, oh, no, I better turn the camera app back on before it goes to sleep completely. I think and that's the only way I look for apps, like to make it stay open and stuff like that, stay awake, and that's... I mean, there's just some that have that function built in, and that camera app has the option. Do you want it to keep the display uh, running, you know, keep the phone from going to sleep? And I turned it on, yes, keep it keep it running because uh, I don't want to lose my camera, right? And and because I have it plugged in, I can do that. I'm going to turn it back on now. <laughs> Okay, now, I turned it back on because I'm afraid it's going to go to sleep on me if I don't have it on. And it lost connection, though, to the, uh, it's frozen. I don't know if it'll come back. It might. 
more interested in what's going on on the desktop right now anyway though getting close 93 percent <clears throat> Yeah, that's always uh, not a good thing to do as far as OBS Studio goes. <laughs> it's, I never usually turn the camera app off on purpose. It's usually uh, something that's caused that to happen against my will. <laughs> okay, now what? Did it get done? size doesn't seem to be right though oh it gave another error bad message all transfer failed now and it started another uh, file 202735 that's the one below it Oh, that's 202735. Well, did it finish the one? Uh, 029 file? I wonder if it's going back and trying. Still no failed transfers, though. Successful transfers? Oh, there's there's the answer to that question. Some of those fall names are so long you just can't can't get to the end of them. I mean, I could. Well, yeah, no, you can't. They're so long. You can go that far at least. Now here's the one that's being transferred right now. Two oh two seven three five, which is the next one underneath that. Oh, it's actually the third one down there. So it's not going in um yeah, well it wouldn't be going newest to oldest. I'm sure it's going in alphabetical order. Two oh two so maybe that was the first video? It was you know, I think the one on O twenty nine was the first one and all these others may still need to be done. Hmm. I didn't think that was going to be the case, and it did that. Did that again? Transfer failed. Disconnecting, reconnecting. Now it's back on 029. So it's trying to f trying to finish them. Evidently, it's trying to finish them. It's like it's going back and trying to get that file again. But I'm wondering is if, if it fails like that, is it going to have to start over and overwrite the whole file? See, it's, it's not, uh, it's way down at the low end, 4.2% percent complete. And I guess it doesn't report fail transfers till it is finished completely, because uh, it's been too many. There's been a for sure one fail transfer, and it looks like it started over. So maybe I am in real trouble with this working. It may not work through Lucky Backup either. There may just be a real problem with the. Uh, I don't know what the problem would really be. You know, as far as. Unless that app, SSH Droid app, is actually buggy or something, you know. Um, what else kind of problem would it be? I used to um, <coughs> do this more and generally was successful until I started having problems with the bigger files. <coughs> I can't even tell how big they are. Because even though I can do that, I guess I'd have to uh, 
Looks pretty big though, doesn't it? That is such a big number. That must be uh, whichever one's smaller, kilobytes or bytes. I never can remember. See if there's like a file information thing. Yeah, I don't think so. It doesn't tell you, but that is a huge number. So that must be the smaller denominations than. Uh, I think bytes are smaller than kilobytes. I can't remember now, but you just don't see that. Uh, well, like if it was a three, what you usually say, see like in Crusader, if it was a three gigabyte, you'd see, uh, you know, 3,000. I, I don't know. You wouldn't have that many decimal places. I can't even read that number. I don't know. I don't. When it gets up above... Uh, 900,000. I don't even know how to read it. I mean, I never see numbers that big, so <clears throat> I don't know dollars that big. <clears throat> so uh, I don't know how to read, read million dollars figures and stuff like that. <clears throat> All right. So um, I, it looks to me like it has just flat started over. And so it looks like... Uh, I'm starting to wonder if it will actually ever work. And I think that that file, well, that, uh, 029 <clears throat> MP4 file, is perhaps the uh, first one that it started copying. Because that is when it's in alphabetical order, that is the one on the top. And then it was, what else was it trying to copy? And I think it failed too. 029, where's the other one? I think they're failing. And it's, yeah, 202735 down here. It was doing that one. And then it failed. It seems, to, it thinks it's inactivity, but it's not inactivity. It's working away, copying it. Oh, that's a different file. So maybe 202735 actually worked. Yeah, I guess it did. Kind of hard to tell. Well, I guess you could tell down here. Well, you could if you didn't have all these other files that are so long you can't. That one worked, and I can't. It won't let me go any further than that. I think that's the last one. Two one two one three seven. That one there, and you can see it's much smaller. It's got a much smaller number. So it was successful. So. Um, <clears throat> tells you to file permissions and read write execute read write execute tells you all that so uh so these keeps trying to write those other two files, which are, are obviously pretty big, and it's not being successful. This one's bigger now. Well, it, it, the the one that it's working on right now, <clears throat> but it's not as big as the one over here. It looks like it's about half as big. I guess. Just kind of giving it a glance. I mean, like looking at it, like I say, uh, looking at it like it's a picture because I can't. Well, my even when my right now my eyes are blurry and mine's tired. But even if it wasn't, I wouldn't even know how to say that number. I don't know what, how big it is. I guess it's in the millions, but maybe it's even bigger than that. I don't know. It looks to me like it might be bigger, like bigger than a mil. You know than past the millions and into what's the next one? Billions, I guess. What is it? Millions, billions, and trillions? Like that? I'm not even sure. I just never had never had to deal with numbers that big. Never had that kind of money. But uh, 
I guess I got that kind of uh, kilobytes. If it was if it was a bit torrents, that might be good. But um, I think I am in a in the middle of a task that not even, may not really ever finish. At least it's giving it a good old college try. As they say, oh, look, it's disconnected again. It's sitting down here saying, well, the thing is, it's trying to finish its right. Uh, there's, I guess these, these files, are these what's being written right now is actually in the cache on my desktop. See, it's already been downloaded. It just hasn't been written yet. So even though this, this connection is disconnected, now it's reconnecting. Um, and I guess if it does it fast enough, then you don't lose anything because you got cash on your, you know, it's writing from the cash. Because I do know that, you know, especially like with wireless, you would, you would put it in a cash file first and then go from the cash file to the drive, you know. And and then maybe even because it's not a drive, it's a USB drive, an external drive, it may do that even more, you know. <clears throat> Now it stopped. Just stopped dead in its tracks. I don't know if it's going to error out and quit now or what. Starting download. It may start over. It did. So it's breaking and starting over. No way. It didn't start over that time. That time it stayed where it was. I guess about where it was. 15%. I've never sat here and watched this before, but I really want to figure out what's wrong, going wrong and see if there's a way I can make it work. <coughs> but I do know this. I am very, very tired now. The game's no longer any fun, so... You know, if I'm going to try uh, to make get see if this will work, I just need to do like I have done before. Just set it up when I can. I can let it run for hours. You know, while I'm just let this program sit here and run. Um, really, I think that I think that since I can see that it's really having trouble, even if it would uh, finally succeed after a very long time. I think that maybe I'm thinking that maybe Lucky Backup might actually be able to do it better. If 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 he you know if and then unless it's just something really weird about the way the phones are you know causing the I think the phones are uh, itself or the application or the management battery man even though you have it plugged in I think that uh, <clears throat> battery management app interferes with some of this stuff that it considers to use you know too much battery. Didn't think it would do it while it was plugged in, but still no failed transfers, but not. Yeah, only one video looks like that's a successful transfer. It's that one that I showed a while ago. Everything else seems to be other types of smaller files. But yeah, it was up at. Uh, well, actually, what was it? It was at ninety-five percent. And then it failed and then started over. So, yeah, I don't see any sense in letting it, you know, sitting here wa waiting and letting it keep on trying. <clears throat> Just going to drive me crazy. Looks like my uh, preview is not, I was going to listen to the audio on my preview and I don't hear anything again. What happens is that, uh, even though it looks like it's playing over there, it loses connection and stops playing. And my laptop, you know, you might think I have it on the Wi-Fi, but I don't. I actually have it plugged in to the Ethernet. And uh, I hadn't, I think this particular laptop, it's running to Bane, and I don't think I, the, the, the Wi-Fi didn't work right out of the box, and I don't think I ever got around to trying, you know, trying to find a drug. Yeah, I'm still online at least. <clears throat> still, I'm still working. Uh, I never did install a dry, Wi-Fi driver for it. So, um, I think that this does not work well either on these big files. 
<clears throat> even though it keeps on trying and maybe it would succeed after hours and hours but uh, I don't know I just don't see why it would get to 95% and then just suddenly you know start over so uh, could be a problem with the broken sometimes when you have broken files it causes problems and if you delete the broken file on your you know wherever you're trying to write to and try it again then it works when you have this sort of thing but boy that would be hard to figure out um, I'd really have to be thinking straight to compare these long numbers you know for file names if they were named with descriptive file names I could figure it out a lot better that way generally what I do is depend on apps like this that can tell <laughs> that the files are you know don't match and, and let them just over you know override them if they need it <clears throat> but uh, yeah I think I, what I'll do is the next time I will try uh, next time I want to try to back up these phones I'm gonna try to see if I can get lucky backup to do it <sighs> so uh, it doesn't really matter I don't think if I cancel it because I uh, you know, and I'm start. I'm finally realizing. Well, this file, I, I think I've. I'm not sure. Every I think every error has been on this particular file. Let's see. Get back to the first error. Yes. Every error in here. Every set of red text. Uh, the green text is some just telling him what to, new directory. Every error is that same file. Looks like. So it's just trying to write. Well, now there was an error on that other file, uh, 02735, that one there. So most of the errors, now there it is twice on that. Okay. Twice, three times. Okay, so no, there's plenty of errors on that other file too. Don't, what I'm wondering is, did it succeed? Well, I didn't see it in the successful transfers. That's back to the file that I was trying to write right now. There's a 202735. So no, there's just about as many errors. Just trying back and forth, I guess, between those two files, trying to get one of them to work. <laughs> I don't know what, how, it, how it decides what it's doing. But... Uh, The video file names and, and well, and the directory that they're in is uh, there's a lot that did succeed, but there's only one. Looks to me like there's only one. You can barely, I can barely read it, but I can see it's uh, 137, which is that one there. It succeeded, but and there's no other. I don't see any other video files in there that succeeded I just now realized I was looking in the wrong spot to try to tell now I'm looking in the right spot it's kind of hard it goes too fast there's really a lot of files that have been written Trying to scan them and watch as they go by. See if I see any more MP4s. Yeah, it's going to take forever to get through that again. So, uh, I guess the fail transfers, I don't know, it might show up. If I, you know, if I cancel it, it may show failed transfers. Now it's all the way up to 27%, but it looks like it froze up again. Just, yeah, the numbers stop rolling. <clears throat> so I'm going to disconnect. Did it start back up again? Yep, started back up again. I wonder if it's going to be a whole new, um, well, I guess when it gets started again. No, it, it started back up where it was at. 
Oh, it's got two files going now. What do we got here? I wonder if that's another video. Yeah. 2027. Maybe it was trying to write that both of those at the same time all along, and I just didn't realize it because you can't see them both at the same time. But <coughs> That's probably is all it would try to do. On big files like that, that's probably all it would try to do at the same time. <coughs> I think I was just rolled where you couldn't see them both. That's what I'm thinking now. But um, the 029 and the uh, 735 file. This one and this one are being written right now. But I would like to, well, I guess it's not going to make any difference because even if it succeeds on one or both of these, It'll go to another one that it won't succeed on. Unless some, unless all the rest of these have already been backed up, and they, wait, wait, it'll skip them. 126. I don't see a 126 in there. I would imagine there's going to be some more that haven't ever been backed up. See, like, the reason I know, I think some of them have been backed up is because I've tried this once or two, two or three times before, I think. And had it fail and given up, <clears throat> have failures and given up. But um, anyway, um, now when I saw that one starting over from, the, I thought I saw one starting over from the beginning. It could have been that I actually saw the start of a new file, and I was confused about which one was which. Now I'm starting to wonder. But no, I saw this one at, I'm almost certain I saw this one here that I have highlighted at 95%, and then it failed. I'm still debating about whether to cancel it. Well, I'm still going to have to cancel I just can't sit here and wait this long. And my, and my more important goal is to back up my, you know, my important files on my 5 terabyte drive to the 8 terabyte drive, and I need to reboot the machine. Uh, to not well I don't have to to start lucky back up I can manually start it but the machine needs refreshing it needs to be rebooted to start such a big job and run all night and maybe you know, it'll still be running tomorrow and it didn't have any hope at all of even be able to use the machine until you know like tomorrow when I get up and I want to use the machine uh, I think I could at least I can like run my web browser and stuff it's about all I could do or one hour of Thunderbird, you know, email or whatever. I can just, but of course, the web browser is the number one thing I like to do, you know, read or watch stuff. Uh, <clears throat> so I could run that, you know, for hours. Uh, most should be able to, unless it gets so uh, overwhelmed <laughs> that I, it just can't do anything, then I might have to, uh, well, I guess I would just have to reboot it. But And then it would, good thing about the way these backup work is uh, you know they'll pick back up from where it left off and it'll see the files that didn't get finished writing and it'll override them there is thing is, is if you interrupt it's if you can ca cancel it and not just interrupt it then you'll have a better chance of it you know working right there are times if if say if especially with things like a power outage or something sometimes the file doesn't get the right size data you know written to it and stuff like that and then uh, then the file is corrupted and it can't be it, it stops it can't be overwritten so the file can the, the backup can't be written you know so you have to find that faulty file and manually delete it but uh, yeah it's just working its butt off at these two files and uh, I'm almost certain that I saw this one at 95% and then saw it fail and start over from the beginning. This uh, 029 file. This one here, it could have been running this whole time and I didn't realize it because it was out of the picture. That's what I'm thinking. I didn't realize, you know, they had it so, that was the fault of it was so narrow down there that I couldn't see that. Oh, now I can see the action. I can actually see where I'm at and the paging up and down. Yeah, that's a lot better. I couldn't the page the the blue bar right dragging it up and down wasn't working right. Now it works right. Get 
to the bottom you see the uh oh the one that did right yeah so i don't think there's any i don't know which way you should go i guess down there to find the most recent i see that getting the good you know getting further and further towards being done and i keep saying no don't quit now let it finish but that's still another 10 20 minutes off i think to get into 100 percent if it ever and i didn't make it last time i know that <clears throat> i do know that still debating about what i saw but uh, i mean unless i was I don't know. I, that one that did finish, I don't think I was looking at it. Because I think it was pretty small and it went pretty fast. And I think it was this one that I was looking at when, that, uh, when it started over. Yeah, if you're going to let this try, just go through and and see if it'll work then you better be just need to be able to leave it for three hours at least something like that is from i know from before when i did have it work or i just kept trying for that long and then finally gave up the last time i was on using crusader and it ran and ran and ran and ran and then failed on a bunch of them and i really didn't really know which ones failed and which ones made it you know and all that sort of stuff All right, so yeah, I'm going to um, going to go ahead and stop it. Let's see, can you pause or cancel or something? Transfer server. That, yeah, if I just disconnect from the server, then that will abruptly stop it. You know, in the way that I was saying, I didn't really want to do. That is normally what I do, but normally I'm not. It don't do. I I have done it, uh, but normally I don't like. I don't do it in the middle of a transfer. Oh, you know what? I just remembered something. This. Uh, think if you hit disconnect it'll say do you want to finish the transfers and if you say yes and it'll go on for a big file like that it'll keep trying for a long long time <laughs> it's going pretty quickly though that's what bugs me about quitting it's it's going along pretty quickly of course look how much more t house that was not even to 50 percent yet yeah it's bytes Oh, okay there we go i kept wondering about that all uh, the large numbers bytes and the small smaller numbers kilobytes so uh, <clears throat> yeah i did have it right in my head uh, why in the world would it display in bytes that's ridiculous i mean no nobody uses that sm i mean there are files that small but it's not anything we deal with oh that one quit and then started back up again Disconnected. Which one disconnected? I wonder. I guess it's just both of them. But uh, oh, that's yeah, kilobytes. I was gonna say, is that kilobits per second? That is kilobits per second. It has an S on the end. Okay, this is bytes. So that's the size, and this is the speed, kilobits per second. <coughs> Because I was going to say that it, a minute ago it was at about 900 and something. And I was going to say, well, that's about a gigabyte. I know that much. But uh, that is actually speed transfer. And that is the size. But that is ridiculous. Uh, at the very least, tell us in megabytes. But, I mean, you should, megabytes is good because you know a thousand megabytes is a gigabyte. You know, that's not too hard to figure out. 3,000 megabytes would be 3 gigabytes, and you know, round about there anyway. So, uh, <clears throat> OK, 
a lot of apps will give you the choice between how to display things like that. Uh, yeah, if I fool around with that, I might jack something up. But uh, <clears throat> I'll copy that IP just in case I want it. I don't think I do, but. Yeah, I don't know why it keeps disconnecting, reconnecting, disconnecting, reconnecting. It says due to 20 seconds of inactivity. <clears throat> but it's sitting there copying away. Well, you know what? It did. Uh, the, I was just sitting there talking and looking at it. Those numbers had stopped rolling. So maybe it. I don't, maybe there's something that's not working right that uh, does cause the inactivity. Could be dropouts in the uh, <clears throat> could uh, could be dropping data. You know the Wi-Fi dropping data. Could be. Maybe that's the real problem. Then may not be have anything to do with the application I'm using. It may be the Wi-Fi. Just like it drops frames, you know, uh, when it gets uh, more than can be handled uh, by the hardware, then it drops frames of your video when you're streaming video and all that. And I could have uh, made a mistake turning that video back on. It's frozen, no that much. You know, it hasn't really helped to have that video turned on. Like I was talking about the thing going to sleep. I'm going to turn it off again. Might as well try that one more time. <coughs> Yeah, well, the phone didn't want to respond. I think it was getting tired. Um, the desktop of the phone, the phone top got kind of all out of whack and wasn't displaying the icons. And then the first second, I thought, uh oh. Then they came back. <clears throat> I started, what I was going to do was uh, find the SSH droid icon and bring it back up to the front because what I did was minimize it. Then I decided to not try to do any more because I was afraid I'd lock the phone up. I've seen that one being at 85%. It makes me want to wait <laughs> and see if it finishes. Um, but <clears throat> probably not. It might be very disappointing here <laughs> in another. It's. I was saying how long I thought it was going to take to get on up there, but it really hasn't taken that long. Uh, Instead of 10 minutes or whatever, it's been a matter of two, three, four minutes, I think. At least I think. And uh, that file would finish, then that would be encouraging to maybe try that again and just leave it alone and let it run. But if it if it uh, gets up close to the top again <laughs> and, and, you know, errors out again, I guess it errored out. I, think, I thought it did. So for some whatever reason, I mean, errors out. Well, I don't know. What does that mean? Uh, <clears throat> um, I guess that's just the way I say it. But um, yeah, I do remember now that the, the what I had thought was wrong. Oh no! Look at there. It went fast. It's up to ninety-two percent. So I'll just wait, wait and see if it finishes that file. What I thought was wrong was that the uh, probably turning off that phone app did help a lot. Uh, not not to, you know using up half the bandwidth available there on that Wi-Fi chip on that thing. Um, what I thought was wrong was that the phone kept going to sleep. 
and I couldn't figure out a way to keep it uh, awake, you know, with just running the Wi-Fi Finder app. I mean the SSH Droid app. But yeah, well, I'm going to sit here and watch it and see. Uh, what did it do? Did it start over? Darn sure did. Now see, my hi it's been highlighted. That exact same file is still highlighted. And it things jumped around and blinked around. It made me look away because things were happening at the top. It had uh, error while reading. Received message. Description bad. Bad message. File transfer failed. That's the same thing we saw before. And now, So it tried it again. And it did it on both of those files, not just the one of them. Or wait, no, that's a new file. No, no, it's not. 735. It failed on both of them, and it started over. So it can't do it. It can't do those files for some reason. Now, let's see. I wonder if it's failing, like I said, because these are, these files are corrupted over here. I do know which files are which, so, uh, you know, that could be part of the problem. Uh, I'm trying to think. I was going to say, oh, well, I can, the ones I want to get, uh, I'm thinking about here, are the one, I'm thinking now that I'm going to delete these files that are bad, 11029 and... What do we got? Oh, that's... Is that the ones that have already been copied or something? I just realized there's more in the window. Or those are the ones that are going to be copied. Those are queued files. Okay. Uh, 11029. Or 111029. And then I'm going to be really careful because I don't want to delete a file that's... Uh, <laughs> you know, no way to get it back. <coughs> And then um, 202735. 202, that's what we're copying. 202735. 202735. 202735. Those are both the same size, almost. They're failing at the same point. Um, what I'm thinking about doing is deleting them so that, uh, you know, maybe if there is a problem like I was saying I have seen before, or a file somehow being corrupted won't, it breaks the new transfer, you know, the, uh, or it can't be up. I don't know. I think sometimes they try to update them. You know, they try not to rewrite them, re overwrite them like I was actually saying a while ago, but they try to update the file. And it's trying to do that and it's not working. But, uh, Let's see, one 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 oh two nine two oh two seven three five. Okay, so I'm gonna leave those highlighted. Whoops, there's one of those accidents. Two oh two seven three five. Now I'm gonna disconnect. That way I can't hurt anything on the phone for one thing, but also I'm just giving up. And see it's still trying to finish the transfer though, even though you said disconnect. Um, I think what they do is they try to get, they don't try to, actually they do, they try to finish the last ones that were running. Uh, I thought it would ask me, I was going to say earlier, is it will ask you, do you want to end those transfers, pending transfers? And you can say, yes, end them, you know. Maybe you have to, oh, I think you, if you go, I think what you end up having to do is maybe close the app. So not saying failed transfers or anything, but uh, not pending transfers like all queued, but the ones that are just being done right now. It tries to finish those even when you disconnect. See, it's it's uh, well, it's not really. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's in cache. Could be whatever it's writing right now. But what I was gonna do is delete those files. Uh, so that maybe they won't cause trouble. But uh, 
now I don't know how I can do that because it didn't quit like I, like I expected it to. I think I'll uh, take a screenshot of that. Then that way I'll know what files are what. Yeah, do that. Okay, <clears throat> take another one. Now, I'm going to close the app. I think that way it will quit trying to write them. It didn't, it didn't close. It got smaller. What the heck? There you go. Do you really want to? Yes, I do. I really do. I said yes I do. I really do. There. Alright, now let's open up Crusader. <clears throat> and I'm gonna I guess I'll use my screenshots and tell me <coughs> those file name numbers again. And delete those things. How come that phone folder is not showing up? There it is. Oh, Dawn. There we go. There we go. Okay, I think I see them, but let's go look at our screenshot. O twenty nine, yeah, one 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 oh two nine and two oh two seven three five. They're actually the last two on there. And we know those are bad files. So I'm gonna delete them and maybe that'll help. Next time I try it no matter what I use to try to do it with. Now, I'm going to <clears throat> have to stop the stream and I'm going to reboot and I was thinking I would uh, maybe well, you can, I can't actually show, yeah. Well, I can't open Lucky Back. Let's see, does it? I can open Lucky Back up and I think if I open it now, I think even if I open it before or after it starts running, it's back up. I don't think it'll show me what's going on. It used to. It used to have an icon that would come up, and that doesn't work anymore. It, it got broke over the years uh, at functionality. I think it's got something to do with the new way to do the desktop or something. The desktop X11. Well, I still use an X11, I think. And, but anyway, uh, something is broken. It won't work. Uh, I remember seeing a workaround that might make it work, and it didn't help. And uh, so I just quit worrying about it. But I can tell that's how come I always go in here and you know type and lucky lucky in here to see if it's running because you can't. There's no icon that comes up like see OBS is up there right now, and you can. I mean, you could stop it and do all kinds of things, you know. And same thing with, with Luggy Backup when it used to do that. But uh, <clears throat> not anymore. So uh, I'm going to go reboot the machine. And uh, I was thinking I might come back. But really, there's not really any point. The only point is coming back tomorrow and telling what, you know, showing the results of if it worked or not and all that stuff. If it's finished, <laughs> it may it may very well still be running by the time I'm back on the machine tomorrow. 
and, but anyway, showing the results, that would be really be. So I won't even plan on doing that. I see, I, I just sat there forever hoping that that, uh, that transfer, file transfer would work in FileZilla. That's just not working. FileZilla can't do it either. I thought it could. I decided that it could, but it can't. It's, it's really weird what's going on there. So, uh, and maybe deleting those files would fix my problem. I uh, don't know. But I'm definitely not trying it again tonight. So I'm going to go. All right, bye. Mm -hmm.